bounce your feet up in the air, up in the lid, dressed in a black touch, 40 cow touch, straight to the chin. All right, Rosenberg Radio, RosenbergRadio.com. I got two bills and strife to die. That's how we do it. You know how we pump, man. Straight up. Tell me, tell me first of all, first and foremost, you guys are here doing promo for more fish. So first of all, tell me a little bit about more fish, your roles on it. Tell me about the record. More fish, you know, it comes out December 12th. You know what I'm saying? It probably in stores by the time y'all see this. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a good album. It's like more fish. It's like related to fish deal. It's like the follow up to that. And um, it's like a theater unit album too. So the theater unit's featured very heavily on it. Yo, this is for them greedy bitches, huh? Who wanna eat off my buck? You get 99 bananas. Cause it's like, I don't know if they know, but I come from, originally come from a group called Authorized Fan. It was like an underground hip hop. We was running with Cat back in the day because I, in my group was a uh, Lounge Low. You know what I mean? Authorized Fam Lounge was one of the main members, and uh, that was Cap's brother. So we just started running with Cap during the Iron Fist pillar during the on uh, the pillage. Mm -hmm. Then you know what I mean? We did that movie with Cap, the Iron Fist pillage, which is hysterical. You know what I mean? Real funny shit. I don't know if you ever seen that. Nah, is that where can you get that? It's like underground classic. It's, it's man. Uh, we took a, uh, an old karate movie called the um what's it called the Iron Fist Pillage or Return of the Fist Pillage one of their movies but we took a, a real karate movie and we did the vocals for the karate dudes and it was mad funny it was hysterical so um Cap my manager became Cap Manager and then from just running with Cap my manager became Ghost Manager and you know what I mean cause you know what I mean Mike know, just know how to hustle so then it's like Mike brought me to Ghost and everything was just there. So uh, that's how my end with Ghost and everything. And you know what I mean? Staten Island is small. So when you were, when you were nicer, you would lead on Staten Island, you rise to the top. So we just, you know what I mean? I just bump heads with Ghost. And once Ghost heard my style, he was like, yo, this, yeah, you right in my realm. Yo, it was a minute after 12. You've known, you've known the name Trife for a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, you, I remember you doing joints with Meth and doing joints yeah, with yeah, Ghost. Yeah. And we were, okay. how, how did your affiliation with Wu-Tang begin? Well, I'm affiliated with my brother, all, all of them, but I really mainly just fuck with Ghost. Like, but I, what, what, so what happened though? Because at some point, I remember associating you kind of with Meth, and at this point now, I associate you with Ghost. Yeah. What has your story been like? What's your your kind of uh, rise through the music biz been? Well, it's been like um, basically me and Ghost we from the same hood. You know what I'm saying? He lived in one building, I lived in the next building, and um, I used to chill with his little brother, and his little brother was like, yo, Trey, got some shit, you know what I'm saying? And Ghost heard me out one day, he was like, yeah, you got some flows, you know what I mean? Just keep writing. And he was like, yo, I'm going to come back and scoop you up. And um, 2001, he flew me out to Miami when he was working on Bulletproof Wilder album. Flew out there, you know what I mean? We did a few cuts on that album, and the rest is history. In a way, me and Matt hooked up, you know, he's cool, you know what I mean? That's my brother. When we just, uh, I did that song with him because was, he was, was doing his album. The ghost doing his album, we all went to the studio one day and we just we had to beat on we just everybody jumped on the track. It was a late Saturday night, big chips, we had a lot of Cause I don't know if y'all know, but I, I be playing poker, you know what I mean? Okay, real talk, let me talk to you about Poker Face. Go ahead. Which is my second favorite song on the album after Greedy Vicious. Okay. So first of all, you did real well because you I'm not kidding, I've had that, this is not fluff. I didn't know I was in an interview yesterday. I thought I was trying to interview Ghost. I didn't even know you were around. Right, right. And on repeat. I've had Poker Face and Greedy Bitches. You play cards? I mean, I play enough to appreciate the song. Zach, if you, you, love, you love cards, you're going to love it. Okay, that. so here's my question. You need to get that shit to ESPN, son. I tried. ESPN, it's like, I don't know. I had I got somebody who has an in with ESPN. And it's like, I, I had gotten into ESPN, like, I'm talking about maybe six months before the World Series even came out. Poker came out. And that, that, nobody took a nip at it. Yo, if that, who did the beat, by the way? Uh, my man Emilio Sparks did the beat. Okay, the beat's insane. First of all, yeah. And the, the crazy thing about it is, it's not corny at all. Even though a lot of times when people try to tackle, you know, one topic, yeah, yeah, it, it sounds it, like it gets real corny. Yeah, but like it, it actually flows really well. Like that, yo, I'm telling you. I just I, originally I did it for my man, my man Emilio Sparks was doing a mixtape. He just gave it to me. He said, "Yo, whatever you're feeling for it." And I, I was, you know, I, I, I was playing a lot of cards. I was going heavy at that time, and I just felt it, and I just went in on that. No, I, I originally had this. I don't know if you've seen Rounders. You ever seen Rounders? Yeah. I originally had samples from Rounders in there, but well, they, you still use the straight up all that. That's me. Oh, then you just did the impression. I did the impression. It's a pretty good impression, actually. Yeah, but they, they wouldn't allow us to use it, so we had somebody redo that and everything. But um, what you call it? See, Ghost know I be playing. So when they had the celebrity uh, poker tournament, Flex and, and Puff Daddy celebrity tournament in um, in Atlantic City, I went down. Ghost, you know what I mean? Put my money up, put me in it. And I took the. I won first place. Did you guys hear what um, what Ray? had said on stage about the, the Jay-Z album. Yeah, yeah I haven't yeah. heard about it. You haven't heard about it? Yeah. Uh, one of Jay, one of, one of Ray's people got on stage and I said... I didn't see it. That's you oh, you didn't see it? Yeah, so you know what happened. Yeah. What, how do you feel about what, what that, that situation? Like, really, I don't really have nothing to do with that whole situation, you know what I mean? 
Raekwon camp, Raekwon's camp, you know what I mean, Ghostface camp, Ghostface camp. But um, personally, I think Jay-Z got a nice album, to tell you the truth. So I like his, I like his album, you know what I mean? Plus, you can't expect to hear one thing from one person all the time. Because sometimes that'll get more into the, um, the writer or whatever. So maybe Jay-Z wanted to come a little more creative and try to take bring people from out of that world into his world, into another level of his world, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? You can't really knock his hustle. Like, that's like somebody trying to disrespect, discredit that man's music, you know what I mean? He's selling, he's selling records, you know what I'm saying? So, just like he said, men lie, women lie, numbers, numbers don't lie. Hey, do a This man did the last one and got murdered himself. Took him a while to get his head together. Alex one day out in L.A. made a call in New York. Told this man I'm going down.